All right, welcome back. We're looking here to solve the following problem. I'm going to try to do a bunch of these questions in this playlist, but in this example here, specifically, we're looking for the radius of two equal circles within a square whose dimensions are L by L. So let's find an expression for R in terms of L. And by an exact and simplified expression, I mean something that does not involve using a calculator. It may surprise you, but you only need to know the Pythagorean theorem and how to manipulate square roots to do this question. Let's take a look at the triangle here. We have a right triangle that is isosceles. That is the legs of the triangle, the base and the height are equal. So remember that Pythagorean theorem? See, if we make both the legs of the triangle one, we can simplify this expression here and find out eventually by taking a square root that C is equal to root two. Focus on that ratio, one to one to root two. That is, the hypotenuse of the isosceles right triangle is always in ratio of 1 to 1 to root 2 with respect to the legs of the triangle. What if we want to scale the triangle up? No problem. What if we doubled it? Then everything multiplies by 2, or maybe 3. We could do this all day, but let's go with just the quantity r. So what if we multiply them all by r? I'm using r here because it will help us in solving the original problem. So let's take that aside for one second. And let's go back to uh, the original diagram, which actually has a bit more complex uh, shape. Notice here I just I mirrored the triangle above with the same isosceles triangle. So this uh, square that we have, it will eventually be useful in the upcoming uh, second part of this explanation. Let's just remove the circles and talk about the inner diagonal. From the outer figure, you see that ratio again of an isosceles right triangle. Instead of being r, r, and r root 2, it's l, l, and l root 2. Now, that overall diagonal, we're going to deal with it in smaller steps by using parts of the circle, and that will give us an equation eventually to solve. Back to the circles. You can see here I've put corners, which are squares, and those squares there are going to be of dimensions r by r, where r is the radius of the circles. Just focus on the pink region here. You'll see here that each of those pink line segments individually, including the uh, radii from the upper and lower circles, well, those are all going to be equal to R. So I've just absolutely blasted this page with R's. But you can see that each of those R's there forms parts of the lengths that we need to compare to the overall diagonal. Specifically, if we take one of those corners, we get a square. And that square is R by R. So that diagonal there is r root 2. So each of those blue squares that I've isolated in the figure have length r root 2 across their diagonal. And then you have the more pleasant uh, situation that's going to come up, which is that the radii that I didn't highlight here, those radii are just basic r's. So now we have broken up the overall length from the outer square into four parts. We have r root 2, r root 2, r and r. And those should add up to the overall diagonal length, which was, remember, the green triangle here was L root 2. And we referred to that figure earlier. So L root 2 over there. And that is our equation. Now, it's a matter of just isolating for R in terms of L. Well, let's see what happens here. A little bit of algebra to follow and a little bit of work with square roots will get us to the final answer. As you know, I do these videos in one take, so if I make a mistake, I don't mind leaving it because at least you see that it's a bit normal. Okay, so I collected some like terms. The r root 2 appeared twice. The r appeared twice. Now it's a matter of maybe some factoring. Let's get rid of that uh, two terms of r. Let's get that as one expression in terms of r. See? 2 root 2 plus 2 r, as we factored that out as a common factor. And if we divide both sides by that uh, binomial with the square root, we end up with the answer for r. Now, if you got this answer, you could make these all decimals and have r equals some decimal multiple of uh, l. But the question asks for an exact answer. And this is where a lot of the work's going to be involved in terms of simplifying with radicals. So let's take a look what's going to happen here. Firstly, if you have a radical in the denominator of a fraction for an expression, when that, when that radical is binomial, so you see if it was just 2 root 2, you would do something differently. Here, it's, it's a binomial. We're going to take the conjugate, which is to apply the difference of squares to the denominator 
and to multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing so that we preserve the uh, value of that fraction. Let's uh, multiply those together. So you see there, I just put the numerators together and the denominators together. Now we will distribute the root two in the numerator term by term there. See root two times two root two is two root four or two times two or just four. And then root two times negative two is you just stick them together, negative two root two. In the denominator, we would have a bunch of terms here, but the uh, difference of squares applies here. So two root two times two root two. If you do the roots and the whole numbers, you get four root four. 4 root 4 is 4 times 2, which is 8. And then you do minus and the rest of the difference of squares there. We have here negative 2 times positive 2, which is negative 4. Simplify the denominator. And that's your answer. This answer is actually perfect. Nothing to fix there. You could reduce it, but technically you've answered the question in terms of the exact answer. And we've gotten rid of the radical, so we've rationalized that denominator. But let's go a little bit further here and reduce the fraction. So I divided all the terms there by 2. Specifically, I factored a 2 out of the numerator, and then I crossed those 2s out. That's your final answer. So there you go. Now, you could write that as a decimal, and you could say that R is some decimal amount of L. And I did that as well, as uh, that might be useful to look at in terms of uh, just checking your work with a computer or technology.